Hi friends, it's uh, Sunday, it's time for another Jeep video. I think this one's Jeep number 17 and I'm still working on getting the engine out. I gotta admit, taking the engine out has been more work than I really bargained for, but that's okay. I bought this Jeep as a project and something to do. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it when I'm done. I appreciate you watching my videos. Uh, remember to like my channel if you wanna see more of them, subscribe to the channel and sign up for the alerts. Turn those alerts on so you find out when I post a new video. Anyway, so let's get to it. So. I'm going to be doing things for the Jeep, but not to the Jeep at the moment. So this one ton Harbor Freight shop crane is just not long enough. So it's capable of lifting the engine, but I'm not making a vertical pull. And so I could probably get it out of here, but yeah, putting it back is going to be a big pain in the butt because I really need <clears throat> to be out about another six inches. So... <clears throat> I went and bought another one um, and I got a, a really good deal on it. Um, it was the last one they had <clears throat> and the manager wasn't sure if all the pieces were there. He told me to come back into the warehouse and we looked at it together and we went through the boxes and I said, sure, I'll take it. I need it. And then he made my day. He said, well, tell you what, I'll give you 10% off because the box is open. I said, sounds good to me. Thank you, sir. I'll meet you at the front. Um, I also got a 1,000-pound um, engine stand. I really wanted the 2,000, but they were out of that, and I think the 1,000 is more than enough for this engine. I'm not, I'm not going to run the engine around the block or anything. I'm just, it's going to sit here so I can work on it in the garage while the Jeep is out getting the wrinkles ironed out of the frame. So anyway, I got that for 75 bucks on clearance, so I feel like I made out really good today. I got a two-ton engine crane, and uh, an engine stand, I got a good deal on both of them. I'm gonna sell my one ton because I really, as, as exciting as it is to have two of these shop cranes, I don't need two. Now, if you wanna know more about the one ton shop crane, I did a review on it when I put it together. I used it to pick up an air compressor motor. That's originally what I bought it for. I had some 10 ton air compressors or 10, 10 horsepower air compressor um, packs that I needed to lift and put into a frame. Check out my channel, there's videos all about that. That was a fun project. So anyway, um, what I gotta do now is I gotta make space to work on this thing. So first things first, let me get this out of here. So I'm gonna switch over to uh, time-lapse while I extract this thing from my shop because you know, if it was any tighter in here, this would be Coach on Spirit. All right, so let's get after the assembly. Um, the instructions leave a lot to be desired. So it literally has a whole bunch of crap their lawyers probably made them print. So one page, two page, three pages, and four pages. Uh, I think somebody from Ikea wrote these instructions. So anyway, we're gonna get after it. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach the casters and we're gonna use a Loctite, otherwise known as thread locker because yeah, Chinese hardware will not stay put without thread locker. So let me, um, I think that'll work for camera position. Looks like all the casters are this, not the same. So we gotta figure out where the little ones go and where the big ones go. My guess is that the uh, four big ones go on the main part and the little ones go on the legs. But we're gonna check that real quick and see if the manual mentions anything. Yeah, they're not even listed on the part. <laughs> They're not even in the parts list. Ah. And conveniently, there is a manual in Spanish on the reverse side. Yeah, so the um, there's also an assembly diagram in the back.
So actually the small caster goes in the middle. That's kind of interesting. So whatever. Well, let's get after it. So first things first, let's bring this over here where we can work on it. And it comes with some assorted hardware, quite literally. Looks like all the hardware is pretty much the same. So we'll take all of our pins and put them over here. And then the plastic goes in the trash, the cardboard goes in recycling. Let's find that Loctite. So I'm gonna use medium strength thread lock. More than enough, it's about $3. Not required, just strongly recommended. And before we get too much further, I'm gonna light another mosquito coil because I'm not in the mood to feed our mosquitoes. I suppose there's other ways to light those, but that's probably the easiest way for me. I'll set that down there behind me. Um, I have a hole in the wall that's for a dust collector hose. So, these are going to go here, and these go up here. So, we'll start by figuring out <clears throat> we have different lengths of bolts. Well, that's interesting. Those are tapped. I think it's hilarious. These are M8 by half inch. And the irony of that should be readily apparent when I set it. M8 is metric. So they should be M8 by 13, but they know they're shipping to the United States. And many people in the United States do not like metric and do not understand it and refuse to learn it. And that's why we're the only major economy in the world still stuck on the standard system. It ain't easy being backwards, but as our Supreme Court shows, we're good at it. So, anyway. In general, the uh, process here is to divide and conquer. So, that being said, Uh, this should be, so this should all be metric if it's an M8 bolt. So I'm thinking 14, yep, it's, it's a 14 millimeter. And then I bet this is 13. No, it is also 14. I'm sure there's a method to this madness, but madness is precisely what this is when you have to reach in here with two fingers to do this.
Let's see if this is open. Usually it isn't. Oh, it is. All right. So the easiest way to do this is to just dabble some into the the threads and understand some of what's going to go on the ground and it just is what it is. It's probably poisonous. It's probably bad for endangered animals. And again, it just is what it is. If you have children, this would be a great thing for them to help you with because their little fingers will fit in here and yours won't. All right. As always, when working with Chinese um, products, beware of the sharp edges that are abundantly supplied on all of the areas where you can cut your fingers. Because, yeah, this one has those too. That was not what I was looking for. I wanted this one. All right. Now, you will find this goes together easier if you put the bolts in and then bother with tightening them. The nut and the lock washer go on the inside where they are sure to be difficult to reach. And if, uh, if you missed it, this is very difficult to get your fingers in. It can be done. Once you've got all four in there, um, I recommend using a tool to make short work out of this. Ta-da! Now, feel free to fast forward if you don't want to see all of this. Um, in checking with the people who watch my videos in the past, they like the long form videos, meaning they prefer that I don't do a whole lot of um, time lapse. So, I'm not going to. And the objective of my videos is, is imagine that you were hanging out in my garage with me while I worked on this. And that's the perspective that this is shot from. I'm not running Discovery Channel, nor am I running any high dollar, uh, high budget production. It's just me. And there's only one of me.
in theory with uh, lock washers, you do not need the thread locker. However, this hardware is bought by the ton. So it's cheap, 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 cheap. It's questionable if it even has the right alloy in it. An interesting tidbit for those that don't know, all of the hardware in the United States these days is, is actually not standard. It's compatible with standard. So now if you're making it on this lathe that's behind me or to my left, then yes, it is, it is actual SAE. But if it's coming from overseas, It is not. Why do I say that? Well, just because uh, the rest of the world doesn't run on standard. The rest of the world uses metric. So they figured out what metric matches our standard and they just make that instead. But the rest of the world runs on metric. So they don't do squat. And, they just have some good sizes they ship to the United States. All right, so. Now. If you have something exciting like this, you're going to need to put the thread lock in the holes. And it takes a while to dry, so it's not really a big deal. Um, there are other brands, but this stuff's really inexpensive, so I've had good luck with it. So before we get too much further, I'm going to lay out the hardware for the other side and make sure I don't do anything stupid. So I have one extra lock washer, four flat washers, four half inch M8 nuts. And that suggests that I'm doing this the correct way. And yes, it's very easy to strip out these bolts like I just did that one because this is not quality, it's quantity. It will get the job done though. And three bolts are just fine. If it was really an issue, I could weld that on. That just makes changing it a pain in the butt because then I have to grind it off if I have to change it for some reason. So 
So we're going to relocate this bolt. Let's see what lost. Yeah, we're going to relocate that bolt to the recycling department. And it'll go back to China and get made into something else probably. Really, I have no idea where our recycling goes in this country. In fact, sometimes I think the city just throws it away. But that is their issue, not mine. I do my part, I sort the stuff, and it's up to them to make use of it. In the spirit of eliminating things, we will continue with the legs. Uh, I'm going to relocate the camera. I'll let you guys actually see this up close on this one. All right. So first things first, I'm going to put a drop of thread locker inside each of these bolts. little goes a long way and then because I'm right-handed I'm gonna work this way and apparently the last one was not a big enough challenge because now we've got an even smaller opening to work with and you have to really just kind of run your fingers in here. Yeah, this would be a really good thing for a kid to help with because their little hands can get in here no problem and adult hands barely can reach this. So there's that one. And we will find, oh, there it is, the other wheel. I was scared there for a second that I was missing a wheel. I was gonna go, ah! Because, yeah, it'd be a pain in the butt.
Doing this one a little differently, I'm going to do the bolt nearest me first. And we're two for two there. Mm. Yeah, that was beginning to hurt my knees. So. I'm going to need that one extra one. So the way this works is I put them between my two fingers and then I insert it and catch it and then I spin it on the outside. It's a, it's a difficult insert for sure. And we got one more on the bottom. I do the same thing with this. Again, it's just really hard to reach in here. Um, this is a small diameter tube for these fasteners to be so far back. If I was fabricating this myself, I would not have bothered with the holes and I would be welding these casters on. I know that they are um, galvanized, but I don't, it's, honestly, it's not going to make a difference. So, there we go. So now that's in. All right, so next we're gonna attach these to there and I'm gonna move the camera for that. And I'm gonna look at the manual and see what the attachment method is. Is it a bolt? Yes, it is. It is a bolt from the outside to the inside. So, I think that'll work. So it's bolt number 19, which is a M14 by 3 and 5 sixteenths. That's probably that. 16. So then I have a bunch of heavier bolts. So these look right. I'm going to just check these. I really don't understand why these weren't pinned. Considering that, um, you know, the problem is I'm an amateur machinist, and so I like to see things 
design better. Oh, okay, they did do bushings on these, but they're just, I don't know. Crappy is one word that comes to mind. So let's figure out what size this is. So these are M22, <clears throat> and I don't know if I have a 22 millimeter wrench or not, so I'm just going to use um, an adjustable wrench. And because I can see the threads here, I'm going to apply the thread locker directly to the threads. And I'm going to be a little bit liberal with it because I just don't want these coming apart. Alright, that should be good there. It really doesn't take much. And these call for them to go in like that. I want to look at something real quick because that sure is a lot of play. Yeah, you know what? These are supposed to be pins, not bolts. The bolts are for something else. So, <clears throat> not a big deal. That makes more sense to me. And again, remember, this is the process of elimination. It is not an exact science. The idea is just to get rid of as many parts as quickly as possible because it makes figuring out which part goes next easier. And in the spirit of that, these go here. And because we're going to use it, we're actually going to go ahead and set it up. Hopefully my mistakes will save you from making your mistakes. So they suggested putting the base together first. Uh, pins and then the post and the handle. We'll deal with the handle later. And then the base to the bolt. And here these should not be secured completely. I wonder what bolts we're going to use for this. 19. M14 by 3 grade 4.8. I bet those are the bolts that I just was using. 19. So apparently I have four of these little bolts. Two go there, two go here. Ooh. Some are longer than others, so let's see how much play we've got. That doesn't look long enough. That doesn't look long enough.
I quite frankly don't know what some of these go to, but I'll figure that out later. Yeah, that looks right. I don't, I certainly don't trust this, but that'll work. All right, so, and here I can't see the thread, so I'm going to apply this to the bolts or the nuts. All right, so I'm gonna leave that loose momentarily. Extra thread nut. And until I get the braces in position. These go like this. So, first things first, we're going to figure out what bolt goes at the top. M16 three and three quarters. It's not that one. All right, so we'll set that back in the pile. This is grade 4.8, so isn't it? Those are grade 4.8. This is grade 8.8. .8. That's it.
That doesn't, no, oh, that can't be it. That's not enough. I guess we can make it work, but it honestly doesn't look long enough. Make sure there's not another bolt hiding here somewhere. I mean, I don't have, this can't possibly be it because I don't have any thread engagement. See, that's three and a half inches which isn't on the spec. Well, it says it's a three and three quarter if you measure from the tip, but that's not normally how you measure bolts. So, what I'm going to do is, again, take some of the mystery out of this. So I'm going to get that out of my way by pushing it forward. I'm looking for the bolt that flew off here. I guess that has to be it there. And again, don't tighten these if you're doing, if you're following me, do not tighten these at this stage. And the reason is, is you're not done. You want to get all these lined up before you start tightening bolts. It'll make your life a lot simpler.
Okay, so now what we gotta do is figure out, I mean, we only got one grade eight. I mean, there's just, there's only three bolts here. So let's, let's do this through process of elimination. So that's a grade 4.8 and that's a grade 8.8, 8, but that's, there ain't no way that that's long enough. That's just not, that's not going to cut it. These are grade 4.8, but I don't think these are long enough. I mean, that will go through there. That is the right amount of stick out. So I think you guys aren't seeing this. <clears throat> so yeah, let me see where else these bolts are called for. Cause I only got two of these long bolts. Okay, so these are it. Let me see if this fits. It does. All right, so we're in business. Not with that one. So this is what I think the easiest way to do this is, is to put all this together and then tighten all the bolts at once. hell's going on here. I can't get one of the bars to align now. So I'm going to loosen these up. Don't think for a second that this won't fix itself, because it will. As soon as this all tightens together, uh -huh, this will cinch down and no longer be a problem. So we're going to start at the bottom and what you just saw me squabbling with is why you don't tighten these until you are Done. So these will tighten. And then we'll come up here and do this one. Oh, that one's bigger, so we'll go do these. four millimeter socket and if you don't have these big sockets you can do this with hand tools I just happen to have the sockets so I'm using them because they rarely come out and then this makes this nice and tight 
So I think this is all good at this point. Now the next step is to set this and that requires our other big grade eight bolt. So we'll go ahead and get ready for this. Remember the uh, big bolts are grade eight. And I'm not trying to sense this down, I'm just, oh actually it's bigger than grade eight, or 24. I'm gonna stop for a minute, I'll bear it back. Okay, so we're almost there. We're, we're much closer to being done than we were. So the next thing we need to do is get this handle out of the way that mounts up here. So again, we're going to put thread lock and these are, uh, you know, it's not the best quality of attachment, but we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and put the thread lock in the holes because they're threaded. I'll just kick that out of the way. And then this one just uses washers. Really no idea why there's using washers because I don't think the washers are necessary, but apparently they did. So what I'm doing right now is setting up my bolts so that I don't have to fiddle with eight pieces. I only have to fiddle with four pieces when I put this together. And I apologize, you guys can't see real well, but imagine I'm just screwing four bolts into four holes here. And this is just a handle for moving it around. It's kind of a nice touch, even if it is very poorly welded on here. Um, it's not straight, but it will be okay. Now, this might be the same size. And So I'm not gonna stress it because I don't want it to fall apart. All right, so the next thing we need to do is install the RAM. Let me see what size bolt it calls for. We're really, really close to being done with this. So it calls for part number 17, which is a M16 3 and 9 16 grade 8.8. .8. So it's one of our long grade eight eight that would be it right there so in order to make this work i'm gonna tilt this back out of my way so that i can have a little bit of space to work here and the nut and the washer aren't critical at this point. All that's critical is that we get this mounted. Now, 
<clears throat> they've used the strategic plastic wrap, which is only strong when you try to remove it. I'm right-handed, so I want it to go on this side. If you were left-handed, you could spin it around the other way. <clears throat> And again, I'm going to Loctite the nut, and the purpose of this is just to keep it from coming apart because it will happen when I least need it to. And that's more than enough. This is still flexible. Let me see what goes on the other end of it. Number 21, which is a grade eight, three and three quarters. That's a grade four, grade eight. So that's not quite, but I think this will be the one that fits. Yeah, I'm reasonably confident this is gonna fit. Now, if this is in the wrong direction, just rotate it. You're going to probably have to pump this up. Um, if the arm was attached, you could you could um, just pull it up, but it's not. So, and this is an eight-ton ram, so it means it's using a, a one to four advantage on this. It's not bad. There's no set amount, but the further up this is, uh, the easier this will be. a whole lot more bolt than I think it should be. This is also a grade 8 and it looks about more about the right size. So I'm going to swap them because I think that other grade 8 has someplace else to be. That looks more correct. So I'm gonna turn this where you guys can see it. So I only have a little bit of stick out now. You don't wanna really mash down on these, but you do want them secure so that it doesn't come loose at some point later on. Well, I don't think we're done with that yet. So again, 
And now that it's attached, you can just lift this up and it'll pull the oil out of the ram. And that's just an easier way to um, raise it than sitting there cranking, cranking, cranking. There we go. There is a method to my madness. I did that for a reason. So the next thing that needs to go in here is the chain uh, and the arm. And we're actually going to probably use it at the one ton setting. So let me see where I need this. So I'm going to kind of reverse this a little bit. So it's 20, 29, 20. So I'm pretty sure that this goes through there. I don't know why they got rid of the pin. I actually thought the pin was more convenient. Um, but before I set this, Oh, and this needs to be over here. Now, I'm going to do a couple things here. Oh, uh, no, I'm not. I really wanted... Let me see if I can do this. I really want to shorten this chain up. I don't want a long pick on this. Okay, I can do that. So I'm going to shorten it up as much as possible. The reason I'm doing that is I'm working in a garage. I don't have a whole lot of space. So I really don't want a large... I want to minimize the amount of chain hanging down because that will simplify my life. Now, I'm not going to lock this one down because I may want to change it at some point. And I think I have another nut somewhere. I just don't know where I've set it at the moment. One of the challenges of not having a whole lot of space to work is, yeah, I don't have a lot of space to work. So this goes in here, and I'm just gonna finger tighten this. And meanwhile, I'm going to look yet again for a nut that I'm missing. So this engine weighs a little over 500 pounds and a half ton would be a thousand pounds of pick. Um, so this is 4,000, 3,000, 2,000, 1,000 pounds of pick. So I could push this out further, but it's always better um, to minimize your, your pick distance. Uh, okay, I wonder what I did with that nut. Let me crawl around and look. All right, I need a pair of flashlight to look for it. I'm pretty sure it went underneath somewhere. Huh, active, active spiders, not for long. So I'm missing a nut. You have to be kidding me. Um, 
So if I was not using a balancer, then more, um, more distance would be just fine. But because I'm using a balancer, I don't really, I don't really want any extra chain on here that I don't have to have. Because again, I've got I've got height restrictions in this in this space. Okay, so now I'm up against my electrical harnesses, which definitely don't want. So I'm going to get those out of my way. Nothing without a fight on this vehicle. And I mean nothing. So, rather than fight with these, I'm going to use a screwdriver, which will simplify my life. And I mean nothing on these connectors happens without a fight. Good, that got that one loose. And that one loose. And that's actually all I wanted, was to get these out of the way. All right, so now I'm gonna push those completely out of the way. These little red snap connectors are quite difficult to undo. Um, connectors. So what I want to do is just tuck those out of the way. So I'm going to have to move my connection. I'm 
move this where you can see it. So I'm gonna have to come off this one and go to that bolt because that back bolt is gonna put me in fighting with the firewall and stuff and I, I can't have that. But bottom line is, at least for pulling the engine, I don't need to be all the way extended, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, I'm gonna extend it all the way because when this is pulled out, I'm not gonna have the room that I have. So I do need to be in the further position and that's what I needed to know. So let's go ahead and make that ch those changes. Yeah, I really don't know why they changed from the pin. I think the pin was a better solution. The bolt will work. I just don't, I, I guess maybe the bolt was cheaper. You know, save a nickel here, save a nickel there. And I'm quite irritated that I'm missing a nut. Only because I have no idea where the damn thing went. I mean, it just had to go somewhere. This is quite frustrating to lose a nut. Mm -hmm. I'll have to uh, replace it. And one nice thing is Harbor Freight does give me the uh, specs on these, so I'll just order another bolt. And until then, I will have to just be careful. So I'm gonna just, it's not like it's gonna go anywhere, um, but I'm gonna put this uh, washer behind here for the time being until I can find the nut. Well, no, I'm not. It's not gonna go there. Um, you know, it's not a critical Very frustrating. So I'm gonna set that there. I'll promptly forget that. And then I'm gonna get up in here. So, um, I'd like to see that be on there a little better. These are 11 sixteenths, so.
I just want to get the uh, nut fully engaged so that I can count on its, its holding power. Yep, so we're working. We're able to pick the whole Jeep up, which isn't what we need to do at this point. Um, but that's a good stopping point. We're fully configured. Other than I'm missing, what size nut is it? I'm missing a nut. Twenty-nine. An M14 nut. Damn it. Uh, and I promise you, I don't have one of those laying around. So, no big deal. I will either buy one at Home Depot or um, I'm gonna order some bolts for the engine to mount to an engine stand. So I'll probably just order one of those at the same time um, and that'll solve that problem. It'll cost me all the 30 cents. Uh, I'm not gonna order the, I'm not gonna buy the nut, the bolts for the engine uh, from Home Depot because I don't trust their bolts. I think they're crap and I want quality bolts for this and I can wait a few days for them to come in. So, make sure we're clear. Yep, we're, we're not touching anything, so we're right where we need to be in order to lift out. And um, the only thing that's really missing is it'd be nice if this had a, a way to lock the wheels, but it's not gonna be a big deal. This will let me extract the engine. Um, I'm very, very constrained on space here. So what may happen is I may get the engine clear and I may push the Jeep back out from under it, but I don't, I'm not planning on doing that. I don't think it's gonna be a big deal. Um, but for this, for today, for right now, this is, this is it, I'm, I'm stopping here. And I think this needs to be back here. Yeah, so I think that's about right. Um, you know, I'm gonna go save a copy of the instructions uh, in case I ever need to, or I ever lose another nut on this thing. Um, yeah, I'm kind of bummed that I can't, I can't believe I lost a nut or it was missing to begin with, one or the other. But uh, here we are, we've got we're, we're almost to the point where the engine's gonna come out, and that's gonna be in the next video. Um, I, it's kind of late in the day, and so I'm gonna, t I'm gonna relax for the rest of the day and compile this video and upload it. Uh, the next video will be me undoing the engine mounts and undoing the engine from the transmission and lifting it out. Now, the factory service manual says to support the engine and take the mounts off and then disconnect from transmission. But I'm gonna change that because I've already got one engine mount that's sheared off on the driver's side. That's a real common failure. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to support the engine and disconnect it from transmission and then the other engine mount, at which point it should be free. Um, no, you know what? I'm gonna take the other engine mount off and, and then I'll disconnect from transmission from behind. That way I can minimize the amount of working under the engine that I have to do. I do trust the crane and the, uh, I, you know, I trust what I'm working with. Um, but we're real, real close to having this out of here and everything looks good. Um, and I think we're gonna lift out just fine with this leveler. Uh, the handle on this leveler is very, very chintzy, but everything else is fine. It, it, will, it will work just fine. So thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying the video and um, I hope this helps somebody put together a two-ton Harbor Freight uh, 
engine hoist slash shop crane uh, for your projects around the house. And uh, stay tuned for my next video.